Well, good morning and thank you once again for joining me for this time of prayer together. I'm going to begin by reading something more from Max Lucado's book, You'll Get Through This. Melanie says her son Cooper was born with a smile on his face. The dimple never left his cheek. He won the hearts of every person he knew, his three older sisters, parents, grandparents, teachers and friends. He loved to laugh and love. His father, confessing partiality, calls him practically a perfect child. And Cooper was born to the perfect family, farm-dwelling, fun-loving, God-seeking and Christ-hungry. JJ, the dad, cherished every moment he had with his only son. That's why they were riding in the dune buggy on the 17th of July 2009. They intended to cut the grass together, but the lawnmower needed a spark plug. While Melanie drove to a town to buy one, JJ and five-year-old Cooper seized the opportunity for a quick ride. They had done this a thousand times, zipping down a dirt road in a roll cage cart. The ride was nothing new, but the flip was. On a completely level road with Cooper safely buckled in, JJ made a circle and the buggy rolled over. Cooper was unresponsive. JJ called 911, then Melanie. There has been an accident, he told her. I don't think Cooper is going to make it. The next hours were every parent's worst nightmare. Ambulance, ER, sobs and shock. And finally the news. Cooper had passed from this life into heaven. JJ and Melanie found themselves doing the unthinkable. Selecting a casket, planning a funeral and envisioning life without their only son. In the coming days, they fell into a mind-numbing rhythm. Each morning upon awakening, they held each other and sobbed uncontrollably. After gathering enough courage to climb out of bed, they would go downstairs to the family and friends who waited for them. They would soldier through the day until bedtime. Then they would go to bed, hold each other, and cry themselves to sleep. JJ told me there is no class or book on this planet that can prepare you to have your five-year-old son die in your arms. We know what the bottom looks like. The bottom, we pass much of life, if not most of it, at mid-altitude. Occasionally we summit a peak, our wedding, a promotion, the birth of a child. But most of life is lived at mid-level. Mondayish obligations of carpools, expense reports and recipes. But on occasion, the world bottoms out. The dune buggy flips, the housing market crashes, the test results come back positive, and before we know it, we discover what the bottom looks like. In Joseph's case, he discovered what the auction of a block of Egypt looked like. The bidding began, and for the second time in his young life, he was up for sale. The favoured son of Jacob found himself prodded and picked, examined for fleas and pushed around like a donkey. Potiphar, an Egyptian officer, bought him. Joseph didn't speak the language, nor did he know the culture. The food was strange, the work was gruelling, and the odds were against him. So we turn the page and brace for the worst. The next chapter in his story will describe Joseph's consequential plunge into addiction, anger or despair. Wrong. For the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian, we read in Genesis 39. Joseph arrived in Egypt with nothing but the clothes on his back and the call of God in his heart. Yet by the end of four verses, he was running the house of a man who ran security for Pharaoh. How do we explain this turnaround? God was with him. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. His master saw that the Lord was with him. The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had. King David asked in the Psalms, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I run from your presence? He then listed the various places he found God, in the heavens, the grave, if I rise with the sun in the east and settle in the west beyond the sea, even there you would guide me, for God is everywhere. 
Joseph's account of those verses would have read, Where can I get away from your spirit? If I go to the bottom of the dry pit, or to the top of the slave block, or to the home of a foreigner, even there you will guide me. Your adaptation of the verse might read, Where can I go to get away from your spirit? If I go to the rehab clinic, the intensive care unit, the overseas deployment office, the shelter for battered women, the county prison, even there you will guide me. You will never go where God is not. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I don't know what the issues are that you face in your life today. If like Joseph you are at the bottom of the pit, if you are midway or even if you feel like you are at the summit. But whatever place you are in, God is there. As that reminding reading reminded us of David's words in Psalm 139, where can I go from your spirit and where can I flee from your presence? Nowhere. In this time that we share together in the presence of the Lord, I pray that you will know that he is with you surrounding you and comforting you in whatever situation you are in, be that at the bottom or at the top. And so our psalm today is Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my crying, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice, in the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness, evil will not sojourn with you, the boastful will not stand before your eyes, and you hate evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies, for the Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and the deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make the way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are destruction. Their throats are like open graves. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them forever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord, and you cover them with favour as with a shield. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun. He said, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all these people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread, I give to you, as I promised Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. For as I was with Moses, so I shall be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. So be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. 
being careful to act in accordance with all that my law I gave to Moses. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate upon it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you then, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Today's canticle is called A Song of Joy. O oh, be joyful in the Lord all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, it is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand, stand firm. Stand therefore fastening the belt of truth around your waist, and put upon the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the Gospel. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. For I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. I'm going to read again from Colin's book, My Dear Child. Love always trusts, yes always. If you love me, you will trust me. I want you to prove trustworthy to others, for my love always hopes. This means you can look to the future with positive attitudes, knowing that my promises will be fulfilled. I speak of future events with as much certainty as if they have already taken place. Don't give up. Persevere, holding on to my word with an honest and good heart. Believe the promises that I give to you and continue in the glorious hope to which you have been called. You are going to see my face, child. 
You are going to have a new resurrection body and you will live in glory with me forever. For this is your hope. Love never fails. I will bring you to the fulfillment of all these aspects of your hope. I will not fail you and I don't want you to fail others. Honour your word to them just as I honour my word to you. My love will never pass away. Do you realise, my child, my love for you is never ever going to end, and neither will your love for me. So let us pray. The scriptures tell us, Lord, that love is patient. How, though, can we be patient when we experience injustice? Teach us to be patient without being silent or inactive. The scriptures say love is kind. Lord, how can we be kind as we confront what is evil? Teach us to love our enemies. The scriptures say love is not jealous. Lord, how can we not be jealous of those who have so much more, so much power and control? Lord, teach us to keep our values straight. The scriptures say love is not pompous. Lord, how can we not be pompous when we are speaking truth to those who seem so wrong? Teach us, Lord, to know how to both speak and listen. The scriptures say love is not inflated. Lord, how can we not be inflated with righteousness in the cause of justice? Teach us, Father, to know our limits, that we make mistakes and we don't always see clearly. The scriptures say love is not rude. How can I be gracious but also be committed to what is right? Teach us to respect all our brothers and sisters. The scriptures say love does not seek its own interests. Lord, how can we move beyond our own limits and desires and needs? Teach us to understand the needs and perspectives of others. The scriptures say love is not quick-tempered. Lord, how can we learn from our anger? Teach us to learn from our strongest emotions. The scriptures say love does not brood over injury. Lord, how can we not get discouraged by all the hurts and injuries in our world? Teach us to move forward and get into action for what is right. The scriptures say love does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Lord, how can we stop thinking of what helps our side to win and the other side to lose? Teach us to practice a love that wants the truth to win for all people. The scriptures say love bears all things. Lord, how can we bear the stress of trying so hard to do what is right? Teach us to let go and to trust in your wisdom. The scriptures say love believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. How can we possibly love? Lord, teach us that we don't love alone but rather in community with you and all our brothers and sisters. The scriptures say love never fails. Lord, how is it that we sometimes feel failure? How can we believe? Lord, teach us to love with a heart as big as the world and to receive love and help with a big heart. Amen. God of hosts, 
who so kindled the flame of love in the heart of your servant George, that he bore witness to the risen Lord by his life and by his death. Give us the same faith and power of love that we who rejoice in his triumphs may come to share with him the fullness of the resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.